everyone, it's Rebecca with Bex Fine Art, and for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to paint a really awesome Sedona-themed landscape on your bottle. I use a lot of cool metallic paints in this, so I'll be going over the brand of those and some details shortly. And, oh, there's my little boy, Copper. Look at that cutie. All right, so let's look at our materials and get started. Here are the supplies that I'm going to be using for the sky. As you can see, I've already spray painted the bottle and I used Krylon Morning Sky Chalky Finish. Since I'm gonna be putting resin over this, it doesn't matter if it's matte or chalky because in the end it's gonna be shiny anyways. And then I'm pretty much just gonna stick with a couple of colors for the sky because this person wants a blue sky. So I have these Arteza metallic acrylics. This one is pearl electric blue. It's very pretty. And then I'll also be using my basics titanium white. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Arteza metallic blue and I'm going to basically fade it down the bottle. Normally I would do an ombre with spray paint but I ended up running out of my metallic blue spray paint that I normally use and I didn't feel like buying more. So we're just gonna do it with acrylic. Now because this is supposed to be um, like the middle of the day, I'm not trying to make this blue super dark. So I'm kind of just moving the paint around the bottle with the brush while it's wet just to darken it a little bit and then we'll fade it down the side of the bottle as we go so we create that nice ombre effect. So my brush was pretty dry, looks like I've got a hair on there, when I started this and that helps to create a nice soft blend, which if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm all about that soft blend when I'm painting. And for this, you really have to work fairly quickly, otherwise your paint is gonna dry. So I will at this point get my brush a little bit wet just to help keep the paint um, from drying out as I go. So anytime I start a new area, because you can see it's a little bit darker here, I have to make sure that I go and work that color around the rest of the bottle. Otherwise, you're gonna have a very patchy looking sky. So you can probably understand why I like to usually do this step with the spray paint first because then I don't get the brush texture like you can see now. But this customer said they wanted it to be a little bit abstracted so I think that the texture is fine for this. So now that I'm happy with the top and hopefully you can tell that it's a little bit darker at the very top towards the rim and then it does get lighter as it goes down the bottle, I'm going to do a technique called dry brushing which if you've watched um, my last video you may have heard me talk about that. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit of blue on the brush and I'm just going to kind of quickly, and when I say quickly I mean actually quickly flick the brush around the bottle to give it the illusion that this blue is sort of fading down the bottle. And this is also going to help me um, with the clouds once I add the white onto here. So this is gonna give it that nice hazy look. And I love using metallic paints because then when I put the resin over it, it gets nice and shiny and pretty. not going to make the bottom any lighter because I think that this is a good color to achieve that midday um, look in the sky. So I'm just going to be adding some hazy clouds. So if you've watched my other videos, you've seen me do very detailed explanations on puffy clouds. These clouds are just going to be like your hazy. It's obviously not going to rain cloud. So you only need a very small amount of white. And we're still going to be doing that dry brushing technique where you wipe off most of it so you can see there's very little on my brush. And you just kind of want to flick 
the brush quickly back and forth and then smudge it with your finger some too. That helps to achieve more of a natural look rather than when you use a brush just to do the clouds. It kind of looks a little bit too linear and not as natural. So I'm doing a few flicks and then I smudge it with my finger. And I'm gonna add this all over the blue just to give it some texture and just break up the sky a little bit. These are the colors that I'm going to attempt to use for the Sedona landscape before I add any plant life. They're all variations of gold and copper and brown and again they're all metallic so I'm excited to use those. And then I'm probably going to end up using these two, tangerine and papaya, because they're a little bit more orange. And if you've been to Sedona, obviously, you know it's all about those red rocks. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a chalk marker to outline the general shape of the mountains that I'm going to be painting. first color that I'm going to use is this copper gold. I think it matches the colors of the Sedona Red Rocks during the day pretty well. So I'm going to fill in the entire area with this color and then I'll start to add some texturing and highlights and shadows. Now that I've got all of the copper painted, which I'm super happy with, this is gonna look so awesome with the resin, I'm gonna add some kind of just basic shadows and I'm gonna use this deep brown metallic. Um, they're just gonna be kind of messy brush strokes. I'm gonna be using a small brush for this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do some base outlines to highlight where these mountains are because obviously this isn't just one line the mountains are layered so I obviously know which ones are in front so that's what I'm adding right here okay so I'm using a smaller brush as you can tell and I'm just going to start adding some really loose lines wherever the mountain has some curves. And this will help to make it look more three-dimensional. And you'll notice that these strokes that I'm doing, I'll go ahead and zoom in, are fairly messy. They're not, you know, perfect straight lines or anything. So I'm going to do that all over the whole thing. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tangerine orange and I'm gonna water it down and do a wash over all of the mountains just to make it look slightly more orange and a little bit more accurate to the Sedona Red Rocks. So how I do that is I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of orange paint on my palette and I'm gonna use a flat brush to water it down so it's thinner but hopefully not too runny because I don't want it to run all over the bottle. And then what I do is just do a quick layer over this. So you can see that I'm still showing the shadows through everything, but hopefully this will give the rocks just a little bit more of an orangey tint once it dries. All right, so I'm not sure if you can really tell the difference. I think that it definitely has more of a soft orange look to it now, which is a little bit more accurate to the picture that I'm looking at. Um, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna be using this tangerine orange, and I'm going to mix some white with that, and I'll be using that same dry brush technique that I did with the shadows to add some highlights now.
So as I do this, you'll probably see me do a lot of finger blending just to soften those brush strokes and to also help give it a little bit different texture. Loving how those highlights really help to bring out the texture in the mountains. So for now I'm going to leave it. I'm going to focus now on the foreground of this and then we'll go back and see what details we need to do to finish it. So the foreground of this is sort of um, like some greenery pine tree type thing. So if you've ever been to Sedona, it's kind of hard to describe because it's like in the middle of a forest and a desert. So combine the two and there you go. So I'm going to start off using these three metallics. Focus phone. So pistachio green, cactus green, and olive green. I'm going to layer the pistachio green first to outline where that greenery is going to start. And then I'll be using the two darker greens to actually paint in the trees. I actually think that this pistachio green is perfect for this base layer of where all the greenery is going to be. Um, so you'll notice, and you probably saw from the hyperlapse, that um, I had to do a couple layers of this because the metallic paint is a little bit thinner than normal acrylic paint is, but I decided to leave it a little bit see-through because I like the texture it created, and if you've been to Sedona, you know that it's not just straight forest. There are areas where it's a little bit more rocky and rugged. So I think that that will help to create the look I'm going for. So next I'm going to be using my smaller brush again to add in the trees that are further away. So these are really just going to be kind of like abstract blobs and brush strokes and I'll be using my darker green color. I'm starting with cactus green for this. And I'm just going to start right at the top of where the green ends and I'm doing this technique that's called stippling so basically I'm just doing like little dots of color that help to create the look of something that's further away where I wouldn't normally add detail to it so I start at the top of the green but I'm also going to be adding some areas of green going up into the mountains as well and I'll probably go back and add a little bit of pistachio green to this later but that way it achieves the look that that greenery is actually climbing up the mountain rather than just having a line of it across the base. So you'll see that I added some green patches going up the mountain as well, right in here, and then also a little bit at the top of some places. That's because in Sedona you will see some trees at the top of these mountains, so I'm trying to keep it a little bit abstracted but also um, accurate to the landscape. And you'll also see that the darker green is very concentrated here, and that's because due to perspective, things that are further away are closer together. So it doesn't make sense for me to do detailed trees in the background when really all you would see is kind of like these just darker globs and patches of green. So next what I'm going to do is some trees that are a little bit closer. Still they're going to be a little bit more abstracted because this painting is from far away, the vantage point is further away, but I will make them look a little bit more like trees by creating these messy 
triangle shapes. And this is the olive green that I'm using now. I just wanna see how different that makes it look. I'm still doing that technique of stippling where I'm just bouncing the brush off the bottle and just creating these loose triangular shapes. As they go further up on the bottle, they will get smaller and also closer together. Here is the basic start of those trees. So you can see that they are fairly globby. It's not crazy realistic because again, those are the base layers. And also because this is a slightly abstracted painting. So what I'm gonna do next, which will probably be the last part with these trees, is I'm going to use this Master's Touch acrylic, which is a grass green. And it's going to help me get some nice contrast with the trees. So I'll be putting this around the base as well as helping to use it in the background to make those shadows pop. But this will help the trees look slightly more realistic and less blobby um, but while also adding some details. And I will be using this tiny little brush to do that. I'm going to start off in these shadowy areas. I'm still going to do that stippling just to darken them a little bit because they are sort of all that same mid-tone range so this will just help to um, make those shadows pop a little bit more. So I'm going to do this in the background trees first and then I'll go ahead and add some to the foreground. Here's the shadows that I added, this area especially. I love how that came out. So now I'm just using that same color and my small brush and I'm just going to be defining the foreground trees a little bit more so you can see I started that. I'll show you a little bit closer. And it just helps to make them look a little bit more realistic and less like blobs. Alright, so last little bit is I'm going to use some of that tangerine orange just to stipple in some areas where maybe it's a little bit more sandy in between the trees so it's not just a solid layer of green because again that wouldn't be realistic to the actual landscape. And then I think what I'm going to do after that is just add some really light highlights to make the mountains pop even more and then I will be done with this one. All right, so here is our finished product those last minute highlights that I did with just a very light version of the tangerine and the white I think really helped to tie it all together. It definitely has a more realistic look now. And my last step would be to add some resin to this as well as this person wants their anniversary date painted so I'll be doing that next. Um, but if you want to know how to add resin to your Hydro Flask or water bottle I do have a separate video for that so check that out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, if you have any questions or you want to share some of your art with me or you're interested in any custom paintings, my email is info.bex at gmail.com. And then the rest of my social media accounts are at Bex Fine Art. All right, see you guys next time.